Welcome back to the channel everybody, I'm Evan, and today I'm going to be handing out Floki from Vikings. On the screen you've got a list of the paints that I used for this process. Feel free to substitute anything you have that's similar. Starting out I'm going to be laying down my favorite primer, Steinol Res Black. Now that I got the black down it helps show me some of those supports that I missed. So I'm going to come in here with some 400 grit sandpaper and get those nice and smooth. After I do this, I'm going to go ahead and dunk this guy in some simple green and get him cleaned off. Now that I know i got a good surface to work on, I'm going to come back in with the Stylo Res Black and reapply it. Next we're mixing a little bit of white in and we're going to get a nice gray to do a 45 degree angle, giving us some highlights, not obscuring all the black, leaving a little bit in the recesses. If you look at the back of the head, you'll also see some blue tones. I put those in to show some shadows as I'm going to try and do a front facing light on this model. Now that I got the shadow map in, I'm going to grab my dark brown. I'm going to come in and lay down some base color. I'm going to split the difference between the white areas and that blue shadow in the background. Now I'm going to come around to the front of the face and I'm going to pick out the recessed areas. The next transition up from here is to grab burnt flesh and start smoothing out around the eyes and filling in the temples. Now we're going to grab our flesh tone and we're going to hit the highlights, the raised areas, top of the head, nose, cheeks, anything that's going to catch the majority of the light. I wasn't really happy with how this turned out, so it looks like it's time for Floki to take a bath. In you go buddy. Some days your product just doesn't match your vision, and the best thing to do is just start over. It was unfortunate that it didn't work out, but rather than work all the way through the steps knowing that I had a product I wasn't happy with in the beginning, I'd rather just start over. So for the third time today, Style Res Black. I'm not going to bore you with this too much, we'll just give it a real quick cover. Style Res Black base, gray sprayed from a 45 degree angle, and then white for the highlight. Back to the burned flesh, this is going to get put in in the shadowed areas, underneath the chin, in the temples, and around the eyes. Now I'm moving over to my flesh tone, I'm going to get that on the forehead, the top of the head, the noses, the cheeks, all the raised areas that are going to catch more light. It's important to come in with a thinned down flesh tone so that you can easily blend it in to the burned flesh that you've already got. Looks like Loki's got his first battle scar. I came in with a little bit of red wash to give his face a little bit of vibrance around the eyes and the nose. And while pulling some of that wash back off, I ripped off a little bit of the primer. Not a big deal, pretty easily fixed. I'll just grab some primer, put it back down, and then we'll come back in with this burned flesh and patch it up. Now in order to pull off the shaved head, I'm going to start laying down some black stippling. This can be the very bottom base layer. On top of that, to give it depth, I'm going to put the skin tones back on. A mix of the burned flesh and the normal flesh. The idea here is to make it look like the hair follicles are inside that skin. A couple months ago while I was on the road, I binge watched Vikings. I really enjoyed it, and I thought, why not get something to paint from it? After doing my 3D printed Deadpool bust, I enjoyed that so much that I figured I'd go for another one. I was looking around and I found this guy Maxim over on CG Trader. He had made this bust and I really liked it. Luckily he agreed to send me a copy to try it out. As you can see with this, the trick to getting the hair right is just to go back and forth and back and forth. You want that variety and you can't make it look like it's a pattern. As I keep building those layers, I'm going to put down some blue and give this a little bit more character. I'm going to come in with the same blue, I'm going to go underneath the cheekbones, and I'm going to go underneath the chin. 
it's really going to force your eye to look at that dimension and see it. I know this might seem like a lot of uses of foam, but stick with me. We'll get to brushes, I promise. Here I'm coming back in and I'm stippling that skin color to fade that hairline back into the forehead. The only time that I'm going to swap out that foam that I'm using is when I want a really clean color like up here on the forehead. Otherwise, it's best to let it blend with what's already there. As promised, here's the brushes. I'm going to start working with glazes. All these are going to be the burned flesh and the flesh tone. I'm using X20 thinner for this and I'm coming in with about three parts thinner to every one part paint. It's really important for me to be patient in this step because if I come back over top of wet paint and wet layers, it's possible to strip those up and ruin all that stuff that I just worked on. With the flesh tone, I'm gonna to be focusing on the brow, the cheeks, and on the nose. I'm going to use those light tones to really emphasize those areas, push them off the model, make them really stand out to you. And the inverse of that, I'm going to use my burned flesh. I'm going to put it underneath the cheeks. I'm going to put it in the eye sockets. And that's really going to sink those features backwards and away from you and create that depth. Now I'm grabbing my stippling brush and I'm going to come back in and do those hair follicles again, all about banking those layers. For anyone not familiar with stippling, I'm just loading this up with a little bit of paint, getting the majority of it off on a cloth similar to what you do for a dry brush, and then just poking the model with it, just leaving little dots instead of dry brush streaks. Now I'm going back to my flesh wash, really really thin down. Rather than thinking of it as a wash though, think of it more as a filter. I'm going to lay this down over top of everything else, and it's going to tint, it's going to filter the light, and it's going to change what's underneath it, rather than running into the recesses like a wash would. for the hair, more depth up there gives us a better final look. You haven't seen this up until now, but this is the third time that I put down a matte varnish coat. I do that to seal the model and so that I can come back in and correct my errors a little bit easier without destroying the layers underneath that matte varnish. Is this your favorite part? Oh, this is definitely my favorite part. Everybody loves eyes. I'm going to go ahead and put a nice small dot of blue in, right where I think the center of the eye is going to be. That gives me a little bit of leeway, whether I want to push left, right, up, down. I'm going to come in with a little bit of light gray mixed in with my blue, and that's going to give the eye a little bit of variation and just make it more interesting. Now I'm grabbing my black and I'm going to come back in for the iris. Time for 
some of Loki's signature war paint. This is one of the reasons I really wanted to do this bust. I thought this is a really cool look. Right here you're seeing why I put those matte varnish coats down. I had to come back in with a q-tip and a little bit of thinner to clean up some of that black that I laid down a little bit too heavy. At this point when I messed up on the black, my options are to either try and repaint that skin tone over top of black, or I can come in and try and erase it. I don't know about you, but I know which option I'm going to try first. this look a little more realistic I'm gonna come back in with a skin tone and I'm gonna use it to kind of smudge that war paint and put a little bit of that flesh tone back on top to make it look like it's showing through the paint Same thing on the forehead, lay that black down nice and thick, get your colors blocked in, and then come back later with your skin tones, mix them into your blacks, and then lay that down, giving you a nice variety of colors inside of that black war paint. to get the color that I wanted I came in here for the facial hair and did medium yellow mixed with armor brown that gave me a nice base color to put down on top of that I started creating some highlights by mixing my white into that previous mixture and just brightening it up through steps Time to lay this black down and finish blocking this in. I want to get it into every single recess because it's going to be my darkest shadow. Now I'm bringing armor brown. We're going to dry brush this and we're only going to go from the top to the bottom. I want the light to be catching that top, showing the brown, and it to be fading to shadow with the bottom. Next up, I'm going to give it a little bit more texture. I'm just going to grab my white get it on there like I would for a dry brush but instead of brushing I'm just gonna stipple. I'm gonna stipple this on and it's gonna give it a really nice look. Now we're coming back in with armor brown and going again top to bottom top to bottom predominantly. Later on we'll come in and we'll go side to side a little bit but this is coloring over top of the white that we just put down to give us some really nice look. I'm grabbing my matte varnish again. I want to get this guy sealed up really nice. I'm about to do something I just don't know if it's going to pan out. And here's the moment of truth. Floki looked like he'd been raiding way too far south, catching a little bit of sun hanging out on the beach. This dude had a tan. In order to get back to that look that I wanted, that nice cold northern look, I used my white and I mixed it with thinner. I had about six parts thinner to one part paint. I put this down over all the exposed flesh just to deaden that vibrancy to bring those yellows and those oranges back down. 
The next step was just to put a little bit of red into it so that it could be pushed back into that face, back into the cheeks, back into the nose, where your face naturally has a little more of that red glow. I'm going to come back in with my black, fill in all those war paint areas, and bring them back to vibrant black. Here's another one of the reasons that I really wanted to do this bust. I thought doing these tattoos would be fun. And it was. It was a good chance to really stretch and try something new. If you're going to do this, just make sure you've got your paint thinned down really well. It needs to flow off your brush. If you're dragging it and trying to force that paint off, it's way too thick. The same way that I covered up the hair follicles and gave them layers on top of it to really seal the deal, make it look like they're in the skin, I'm going to do the same thing with the tattoo. I'm going to come back over top and I'm just going to glaze over those tattoos with the skin color. And the last matte varnish. The last thing I want is a shiny viking. So let's cut that gloss down and let's get them covered up. I don't have a towel to throw in on this one so I guess I'll just use my glove. I had a lot of fun painting up Floki. This thing was unique and it was something I would never done before. Deadpool was the only other bust I've done, quite a bit smaller than this and no skin tones. The best thing about this is, if you're serious about miniature painting right now, there is a channel, a video, a technique to cover whatever you're looking for. Just go out there, look for it and get after it. Give it a try. You might really like how it comes out. I know I did. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Hope you learned a trick or two. I'll give you a few seconds to hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one.